the last episode of Spark. We kick things off in style. I didn't think Simmers could be so fast, but boy, can people run. As 12 players begin a competition for $100,000. You're going to play Sims and somebody's going to get 100 grand? I guess I have to destroy them. It's the only option. <laughs> Team Gnome's voodoo doll inspired story gave them the first skills challenge victory. Team Gnome. <laughs> no one yet. They're going to be a problem. While Team Freezer Bunny and others struggle to hit their stride. I don't even know if it is going to come together. In the elimination challenge, it was Team Gnome yet again. Team Gnome. <laughs> we are feeling super confident that we have what it takes to win this competition. Team Freezer Bunny. And it was the end of the road for Team Freezer Bunny. Your journey ends here. Now, three teams are left in a creative competition where you design characters, build anything you can imagine, and tell original stories. Each has a stylist, a builder, and a storyteller. The stylist creates the characters known as Sims. The builder designs the worlds, and the storyteller brings it all to life by producing a dynamic narrative, all using The Sims. This is The Sims Spark. All right, welcome back, Simmers. Each of our three remaining teams have made it through the first elimination round. Congratulations to you. Y'all feeling good? You excited? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> You're all competing for a grand prize of $100,000, y'all. <laughs> Man, I want the team to win $100,000. I'm more nervous than excited. I'm ready to bring my A game, and I'm ready to, you know, show everybody what I have to offer. Going into a new day, I feel like we really need to step it up and prove that we deserve to be here. So once again, you'll be presenting your work to our awesome panel of judges. We have BuzzFeed multiplayer producer and the YouTuber, Kelsey and Peachy K. I'm very much a storyteller. I play the 100 Movie Challenge and put out weekly videos for fun, and it kind of turned into a career. Taylor Parks, American singer, songwriter, and actress. I do voiceover for Sims, so they have their own language. And so when I have to get across an emotion, you know, and I can only do it using those words that we use in the sim world. It's a really, really fun job for me to do. And from our team, we have lead producer David Maki, also known as Sim Guru Ninja. I play this game in a lot of different ways. I've been with The Sims 15 years now. And I'm your host, Rayvon Owen. But let's get down to business. Your skills challenge today is called Parenthood. Each team will create a sim in three stages of growing up, toddler, child and teenager. You also have to build three different rooms for your sim with each room representing their story at each age. Surprise these judges. Give us something we haven't seen before. Give us something unexpected. You have two hours to work and the winning team will get an advantage in the elimination challenge later on. So players, are you guys ready? Aye. The clock starts now. My idea was to go with um, like northeastern England. So I'm really excited about this challenge because I'd just been reading about some politics and reading about the miners' strikes in the northeast of England, and I thought that'd be a very good way to represent us. Immediately, Plumbella knows exactly what story she wants to go with. That was a pivotal time, like when Margaret Thatcher came in and closed down the mines. So maybe he could be protesting. Protesting would be good because there was a lot of miners' strikes, and there was a yes. I would love to do a boy that's like really into makeup. <gasps> yeah! I feel like the parents should be supportive, but then maybe it's like outside. It gets bullied at school a little bit, maybe. I wanted to make something that like actual people that I know have been through, so I thought, why don't we tell the story about someone that's struggling with their gender identity? Tell us they are who they are, and nobody's telling them otherwise. But once you get to school, everything changes. So for the teen years, he's going straight to university. Oh, I love him. I feel like we are at a bit of a disadvantage because you're a streamer. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of the challenges they have given us, they're more focused towards YouTubers. Like, the, you're streaming, you've got all the time you can kind of just let the Sims rip, do whatever you want to. When it comes to YouTube videos, you have to structure it in a certain way within a time frame. So we have to like really make this pop. I'm from England originally, so I've got this kind of dry humor. Good coming. Okay, why don't you eat that again? Any game I play, I've always added that human voice coming from the characters. Mm -hmm. Mumsy, 
Um, what is this Val vampire doing in my house? Oh boy, um... So Sims was no different, I always added that. Why am I here again? Is that you, Daddy? <laughs> so I'm married, I've got four kids. Winning would be like awesome, because then they'd be like, my dad, he went out up against these other amazing Simmers, and he did a great job and he won. Okay, so we wanted to look like an orphanage. What does an orphanage look like? Our girl starts out in the orphanage, and she runs away. She finds a spellcaster and becomes a spellcaster herself, and now she's filled with magic and light. So are they breaking into this building, which is the sh to seek shelter? How will we be able to physically depict that? You could probably say they got adopted by a spellcaster. I like the idea of them running away. While I'm building, Dr. Gluon and X Mirror Mirror are not seeing eye to eye on the story, and we're just trying to figure out how it's all going to come together. I'm liking already the aesthetics that he's kind of presenting. Yes. All of my potions are gone. What the hell? Uh, um, Actually, don't panic. Okay. Chill. Uh, we got uh, it. We got uh, it. Uh, uh, I want that coffin though. I need that coffin. Fireplace, fireplace too? Yeah. Fireplace? Yes. yes. You can put it over here if it's okay. Yeah. Why am I so nervous? We need to get a move on. We spent a lot of time on this room. So we haven't given the bully a name, just Mac. Like we have five minutes and we've not tested anything. You know what I mean? I just, I, I, whatever we can do fast is. And can we do a quick run through? I don't want to stress you out because I, I just kind of want to be able to go through it. because Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. That's a pattern and that's a pattern. Ah. Every time. Right now, we are grinding, we are focused. We're going to get this challenge done. I'm so excited. <gasps> yes! I feel good. Okay. That looks cool. Yeah. It's lit, it's it's lit, lit in lit. here. So he can excavate here, I hope. Come on, guy. We still haven't gone through it, but I mean, I just. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We are absolutely smashing teamwork. I feel as if we're just meshing really, really well. All right, Sims family, time is up. Hands up, hands up. How are you guys feeling? Excited. It's now time to present your challenges to the judges. Team Gnome, you'll be up first. <gasps> yeah. All right, let's go. Welcome, Team Gnome. You are asked to create a sim at three different stages of their childhood and have them in different rooms for each stage of their life. So this is the sim that we decided to make, he's John McNally. And because of the era that we chose, it was Northern England in the 70s and 80s. I took a lot of inspiration from my actual family life. I'm thinking a lot on my dad's childhood, he was telling me a lot of his clothes were hand-me-downs because everyone was too poor back then to have their own. And then the child one as well, he's dressed slightly smarter, he's, still, he's got the little cosy jumper that looks like it's been through the wash quite a couple of times. And then as a teenager, this is where he's really starting to get his independence, so again, still styled on some of the looks that my dad used to wear. It's basically my dad. <laughs> nice. This is John. Uh, we really focused on a working class family and his dad has one day promised him that he will take him into the mines. This is John now as a child. He's grown up and his father has decided that it's time to introduce him to the mining ways of the town. Mining is super important to the community. And then this is now John as an adult. And he started a group, the miners' rights were starting to be stripped away at this point in time. So he really has to rally the troops together to try and fight the government. Thank you, Simpru. So here we have like a really narrow kind of bedroom and a fireplace because usually heating wasn't uh, like already installed, like new heaters. We moved to the mine, which was <laughs> kind of a little bit harder to do. We have like little stone walls everywhere. And of course, lots of columns and beams to lift up the ceiling. The coal that they're gonna transport out. And then we go to the pub. And because of John being like an activist, on the other side of the room, you can see that we stacked the stools and the tables on top, so we have like more space for the crowd coming in. That's it. So this piece was really about your dad and your hometown in Northern England. He works away because there's no opportunities where we live. 
The northeast of England and the mining situation and everything like that, it's really, I'm going to cry on, like, <laughs> on TV, but it's, it really ruined the northeast and it hasn't really recovered from it. So, but I just want to get like northeast England out there in the world and have people know that like we're still fighting. I mean, like I'm here doing this. So, but yeah, I love my dad. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed by this team. And I think it's incredibly difficult to do a period piece. Simprove, the build is incredible. This is like a master class in building in The Sims 4. Take a bow. Yeah. You guys might be the team to beat. Thank you. I'm proud of how our presentation went because I know that we've worked as hard as we can work. At this moment, our team's feeling the pressure of being on the bottom in the last couple of challenges. So we really want to come together and show the judges what we can actually do. I'm going to remind you guys, the winner of this skills challenge will have an advantage in the elimination challenge. Give the judges a guided tour of your work. We have little baby girl Amethyst. I tried to dress her to kind of reflect the life she's living. And as we go to her child age, she grows into herself a little bit more. You can clearly see her favorite color purple. <laughs> she's a bit of a bookworm. And in her teen stage, oh, I tried to integrate you know, different styles from different packs to try to give her like a little flair, use things that I've never used before. And I tried to, you know, bring it all together to give her a nice, cute, different look. Great job. Here we have baby Amethyst living in an orphanage, dreaming of one day living in a castle. But Marlini the meanie has other plans. <laughs> Later, Amethyst runs away and she stumbles across this mysterious potion shop. This potion shop was once owned by her spellcaster grandfather, and she's taken to learning all of his spells. And now she's gonna use her magic to help all the unfortunate children and get back at Marlini. Oh! Is she dead? Yeah, she she's killed dead. her. The end. <laughs> so here in the basement, I really wanted to show the struggle of living in a poor orphanage. So I put as many like cracks, like I really wanted to show like the cracks in the windows and I put stains and like water damage. And then the potion shop. So I wanted to add the details of the potions and the books. And then finally living her dream as a powerful spellcaster. I wanted her to live high in a tower and you can see the view of like the magical world through the window. And also you can see the cauldron. And Marlene the Meanie is in a coffin. I thought the overall structure of the story was good, but there were some holes in it that I wish you explored. Marlene the Meanie is one of the greatest names ever. And I want to <laughs> see her as awesome. Like, how'd she die? So there was a few holes in that that I'm still really hungry to know more about that I wish that was kind of delivered upon. Overall, pretty strong job, team. Thank, Thank you. you. I love the color purple, first of all. So <laughs> let's just start off right there. And I'm, I'm loving how you designed this last character. I would have to agree with just a little bit of holes, which is actually good on you guys because you made me want to know more. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. We've been neck and neck with Team Gnome the whole time. We keep coming in second place to them. So I'm like, I just want to win one, one challenge. Team Cowplant, give the judges a guided tour of your work. This is Mac. He's a sweet little boy. Uh, we thought this was a great time for toddlers to really be able to like express themselves before any type of like societal preset comes into mind where it's like, I'm a boy, I have to wear blue. This is the period where they can just be like, I'm gonna wear whatever I want. This is where he's starting to experiment a bit more with his fashion. They've made his outfit a little bit more like his dad because they have a very close bond. And him as a teen, he hasn't fully figured it out yet, but he's more assertive in what he wants. Um, he is not masculine nor feminine. He's just Mac. Mm -hmm. So we have his dad. They're very close. His mother died, unfortunately. So he's a university dean. Mac spends a lot of time in university. Sometimes he comes along. And he also, he loves dolls. He is obsessed with them. 
So now we are in school. Considering how educated his father is, he is not the biggest fan of school. He knows who he is because he's got such a supportive family around him. Next to him, his best friend is actually quite a jealous child. They usually play dolls together, but today she is not going to play nice. So we're going to mock his outfit and he is not happy about that. He is a style queen. He knows exactly who he is. We're smashing the dollhouse. <laughs> but now as a teenager, as we said, he's a prodigy. He's way ahead of his time. He's already enrolled in university. He started to dabble in makeup as well because you know, he's an artist, so he's gonna go ahead and do his makeup, do his thing. He's discovering university and he's discovering himself all at once. Dr. Ashley, you wanna walk us through this bill? As you can see here, you can see where the child has definitely picked the toys that he wanted to play with and was able to communicate that with his father. It's a really supportive environment. Now for the classroom, wanted to put little nice touches, make a little play area in the back. We wanted to have, you know, his rainbow picture on the wall, kind of foreshadowing what was to come. Now for this teenage years, going to university really symbolizes where you discover yourself. In terms of specific items that defined him, obviously the vanity, as well as the string lights up there with some photos to kind of show that he's found some really great friends in university that support him for who he is. So that's kind of the direction we're there. The character is coming out to me first and foremost. It's the strongest element here. So I really, really appreciated that. Uh, I really liked the, the concept of someone finding themselves through fashion and through their life cycles. I could maybe like use some clarification for like the conflict in the story. It wasn't just like she just didn't like his outfit because like kids can also just not like his outfit or was it something more about his identity. But that clarity there would have been nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Winning this challenge would be great. We need any kind of advantage we can get. I'm walking in and I am, I'm terrified. With so much talent on that stage, I don't know how this is gonna go. Welcome back teams. Not only are we picking a winner for this skills challenge, we're also picking second and third place. And that ranking will affect your chances in the elimination challenge. Our judges have picked an order that they've all agreed on from top to bottom. Taylor, tell us who the winner is and why. The winner of this challenge in particular is Calpin. You guys are the winner because of the fact that you guys did a family that was relatable. You did it in a way that was subtle, but really, really strong. What you guys did better than anybody else was you really focused the challenge on The Sims. The Sims were front and center and everything surrounding them was supporting those Sims. And for that reason, we felt that you deserved the win on this one. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> it feels so good to pull out a win finally. We've been like right there. We've just needed that little oomph to get us there. Now it's not Team Gnome sending us home. They can go home. <laughs> Kelsey, tell us who ranked second in the skills challenge. Although it was a uh, close running, the runner up this time is Team No. You got a beautiful presentation, absolutely stunning work, very creative. You guys probably had the strongest build of the challenge, uh, but there were a few elements I felt were lacking. The story kind of jumped around and left a few holes that were a little bit too big for my liking, so that just took you down just ever so slightly. So this obviously leaves us with Team Llama. You rank third. At the end of the day, we felt like the character didn't have quite as much depth and there wasn't quite the attention to like backstory and detail. We can't keep coming with these incomplete thoughts and keep, you know, constantly getting cast to the bottom. Like this is driving me crazy. I can't take it anymore. Now it's time for your second elimination challenge. The Sims continues to grow the game with added content like these packs. In this challenge, we're gonna hold our very own draft. Each team will draft three different packs to serve as your main ingredients for your team-wide creations. You will use your drafted packs to create a short video story with the following theme, Supernatural. Ooh. Team Cowplant, since you placed first in the skills challenge, you will get first pick in the draft. What's your first pick? 
Team Cowplant is choosing Island Living. Team Gnome, you're up second. What is your first pick? Team Gnome are picking Get to Work. Team Llama, what is your first pick? We're choosing Vampires. Team Cowplant. All right, we're going to pick Seasons. Team Gnome. We're going to pick Strangerville. And Team Llama. Oh, we're choosing Get Famous. All right, Get Famous. Last round, Team Cowplant. We're going to take Discover University. Dino. Team Cowplant, all right. Dino. Dino. Celebrity with Rob Wapo. Vampires. Where the secret recipe is plasma. Dino as the alien is Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Team Gnome, what's your third and final pick? Our final pick is Dine Out. All right, Dine Out. We really wanted to get Dine Out, but Team Gnome actually picked that pack before us. So we had to make a quick decision and pick another pack really quickly. All right, Team Llama, last pick. We're choosing Jungle Adventure. Team Llama's last pick is Jungle Adventure. You'll have six hours, including time with an editor, to work on a video story. One full team will be eliminated after this challenge. Your time starts now. It's time to step up. Like our backs are against the wall. It's either go hard or go home. We've got to figure this out. I got an idea. Come on. So, retired star. Was that too much? x Mirror came up with a more racy idea about an actress who's really struggling with not feeling as young and beautiful as she once was. You start off, you know, pictures of her like on the red carpet, you know, some scantily like clad really shots, big, like really yeah. vivacious like, and yeah, yeah. Okay. buxom blonde, right? But then you skip to, you know, she's older. She's older. Her and life she's is still like she's trying to hold that to look bring together. Back her youthfulness. Okay. She decides to go on a trip, and then we can catch a shot of a vampire biting her. Does, it, does it rejuvenate her back to her youthful self? I like that. X me me idea. Maybe this is something I wouldn't do myself as far as story goes, but we haven't won anything. We've been at the bottom of everything, so we've got to do something crazy. Seductive sirens. Uh, yeah. Seductive sirens. Who's Stefo Sims comes up with this idea to have this mermaid cult kidnapping frat boys from a university, and nobody knows why, and we kind of want to put our own little plot twist on it. <laughs> mermaids versus frat boys. <laughs> I thought we could make the judges. This alien goes around stealing them, takes them to this alien spaceship, where they're basically using human sims as like slaves. Well, for this story, we decide to go with the three judges getting kidnapped by Ravon. Ravon's this alien in disguise. He basically takes them to space, has them work in the alien restaurant. What's up, Sims fam? I'm really sorry to do this to you guys, but I have another twist for you. No, oh, not again. You must each incorporate your parenthood Sims character from the last skills challenge into your supernatural stories. Oh, God. I'm like, um, bring back who? Do what? How are we supposed to bring back Amethyst? This character has got to be featured meaningfully. Why do they keep doing this? All right, good luck. <laughs> How did I know? <laughs> we need to use the sim from the last one. And what are the odds? Discover University is the third expansion pack that we picked by chance, and our last sim is in university. Amazing. <laughs> and this is what we're gonna see. This is Nancy in her prime. Our story is a bit risque, and I know Gluon seemed to like the idea, but he also seemed to be concerned with what the judges may say. If we get sent home, for what we have, and you know what? I don't know what else to do, because it's risky. So. Yeah. A I don't know. Nourishing. I don't know. Ooh, her eyes. With the mermaids, I'm going for more of like a Charlie's Angels approach. I kind of want to make them a group of girls that you wouldn't see coming, because that's kind of their theme. Let's do the frat boys. We've decided to name the frat boys Chad. Hmm. 
Oh, he looks nasty. I hate him. All right, first off, I'm going to do Kelsey. That actually really looks like Kelsey already. Oh, my God. <laughs> As Plumbella is in Creative Sim, I can't help myself but smile because these judges are starting to look amazing. Be careful, he's gonna be critical. <laughs> yes. As long as I've styled them correctly, I don't think they'll be too offended, but Dave could be, so. <laughs> You're about halfway through the time you have left for this elimination challenge, and I want you guys to go home, get some rest, breathe, Come back in the morning refreshed so we can finish this out. I can't wait to see what y'all come up with. We're back in the workspace. Elimination is only a few hours away. We still have to finish filming our scenes and editing it and the VO booth. So I'm pretty nervous. Someone's gonna go home today. We've still got so much to do. Yeah. You can't be the old lady of the jungle. You're so young. I use my magic to stay young, and I can do the same for you. To Chad's being abducted one by one. This rooftop party is turning into a search party. I really enjoyed it being so personal, but I can't wait to see it. Uh... <laughs> we really are challenging ourselves voiceovers, and some sound effects by the one and only Sim Proved. I had lots and lots of fun. I wasn't prepared that like the English swimmer was laughing so hard about it. Apparently it sounded very, very funny. <laughs> hey guys, how are you? This take? Yeah, that take. Yeah. I'm freaking out a little bit about time. That's fine. Yeah, it's it's, it's okay. way too late, yeah. We're on the wire like we were last time. Plot holes, there's plot holes, there's plot holes. Yeah. I'm feeling really stressed because I don't think we're going to watch this before showing it to the judges. I don't think we have the time to like perfect things right now. Yeah. No, we do not. We are really like struggling right now. I think we have been a little bit too ambitious this time. I'm going to have a breakdown. All right, teams, time is up. Hands off the keyboard. Team Llama, you will be up first. For your elimination challenge, we ask you to build a supernatural storyline for three of our packs, with the twist, of course, of using one of your childhood Sims characters in that story. Set up the story for us. This is the story of a high-profile celebrity who discovers an unexpected solution to the stress that comes with aging. Nancy James, also known by her stage name, Nancy Nursh Nursh, lived in Del Sol Valley as one of the biggest stars of our time. Known for some of her greatest hits, the Nursing Diaries, Nurse Nubu, and Jeannie LeRae and Chill. But of course, with time comes age. Nancy was a very vain woman. Aging had always been one of Nancy's biggest fears, and over time, it drove her to the point of obsession. Nancy had heard old wives' tales that a spellcaster named Amethyst, who lived in El Salvadorada, had the power to restore youth. This story is incredible. She decided to travel to El Salvadorada to find out who the mysterious woman was and if the rumors were true. You can't be the old lady of the jungle. You're so young. <laughs> I am 200 years old. After I killed my old headmaster, Marlini the Meanie, I tapped into a dark side. I use my magic to stay young, and I can do the same for you. But it's going to cost you. The price you pay is to become a vampire. Over time, Nancy began to see the effects of her transformation. Her skin slowly returned to its smooth and supple form. It was as if she were 25 years old all over again. Except this time, She's walking on a new red carpet. Ooh. Okay, lady. <laughs> what? 
You guys went above and beyond the challenge in regards to your storyline, using all of the packs that you guys chose, and you guys had the third option, and you guys made an incredible storyline. This is what I was Thank looking you. for <laughs> to see from you. By far the best showing you guys have had at this competition yet. Uh, you rocked it across the board. Great editing, great voice acting. First time I think we've seen multiple people doing voiceovers in the video. Awesome really well done with the twist. You guys really incorporated that character in a really essential way. Uh, awesome. Kelsey, you like you're itching to say something. I loved it. I loved it so much. I laughed. I, you know, it was a beautiful use of all three packs. This was yeah. memorable. Thank you, Team Llama. You can head back to the workspace. The judges were shook. <laughs> The judges loved it. Um, it was a lot of good stuff they had to say about it. Everybody was really taken aback. Maybe we might be really on to something here. I'm feeling really good about this presentation. I'm nervous, of course, but I'm feeling really good because the story we wrote is so cool and it's such an awesome vision from Stefo Sims. So Team Cowplant, you had the advantage. You had the first pick in our challenge. Let's see what you came up with. Foxbury Institute has always been a normal university, but lately something fishy has been going on. We're having a party tonight. Wanna come? You can always bring Daddy Dean. Spotted, the Chads being abducted one by one. This rooftop party is turning into a search party. It's about to rain. I can feel it in my boobs. Let's take this party <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> That's right. As I'm watching the video, I'm starting to realize how confusing it is. I don't think it's the story that's confusing. I think it's the way that we told it. I am starting to get a little bit worried about this one. exactly sure what happened. It seemed like both parties kidnapped each other and like someone was turned into a mermaid. <laughs> and that's kind of what I got from it. I, th I think there's a lot of questions that I'm having right now. You guys always like go for it, making the high risk, high reward, you know, choices. And sometimes I see it work for you guys, but this might have been a time where it worked against you guys just in regards to telling that story. It was a little jarring. Uh, there was a lot of uh, interesting cuts in there that, that kind of made it hard for us to follow along. Didn't seem as strong as your last outing, for sure. All right, thank you, Team Cowplant. You can head back to the workspace. Thank you. Our video didn't resonate with the judges like our work usually does, so I'm feeling kind of nervous. We are so proud of this video. We all put our all into it. If the judges don't like it, it's gonna be really heartbreaking. Hey Team Gnome, you guys were on a winning streak. You got the first two skills challenges down pat. Can you set up this story for us? The judges have been hard at work on filming Sparked for the last few days, but little do they know that someone's been watching. <laughs> all right, judges. Now that y'all have seen Team Gnome's presentation, how are you feeling? I really enjoyed it being so personal, but I can't wait to see... Uh... With Ravon's undercover intel, he witnessed the hard work and dedication the judges had. The exact traits the aliens needed to make their restaurant out of this world. These judges were no longer in control. 
But Bella Goth has been here for years. She knows the aliens' mind games, and she isn't afraid of the consequences. Luckily for the judges, John's small body can't be accessed by mind control, and being used to the minds, he can slip into spaces undetected. <laughs> Ninja's coding skills aided their escape, and even John managed to find a new career path. Wow. <laughs> it, was, it was fun, it was wacky. I thought that was an interesting decision. I think it allowed you to not have to do as much story, because you, you could lean on the fact that we know who we are, so you were able just to kind of pantomime us. So I think he succeeded there. That said, I don't know if you incorporated all aspects of the challenge in quite so strong. Um, Strangerville, I saw minimal assets there and it seemed not too important to the storyline. So, you know, I had a lot of good chuckles. Um, I thought it was really funny, but feel like maybe there was a, a couple little holes in there. Yeah. What are the challenges? And, and did you guys execute them all at the highest level possible? I think that there was a few things missing from it, but it was overall pretty good. The judges have a really tough decision to make. We are gonna deliberate, and we'll bring all the teams back in for a decision. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, good job, guys. All right, judges. Overall, what's the impression here? How do you feel about Team Llama? Woo! Wow. Literally perfect, from like the actress to all of the, like the storyline and the way that they incorporated the, the, the last character. Like, and they actually told us a little bit more about that character, which we wanted in their last challenge. Yeah, they played to the strengths of each individual team member. Each one of them shined in their own right, but it still all came together to form this really perfect combination. Team Cowplan. How do you feel? I think that they utilize their pack super well. Uh, I would have liked to see a little bit more out of Seasons. I think that they really did a great job. It was very cinematic. Uh, weaknesses was that it was unclear. It didn't, you know, effectively tell its story. And that was like pretty big fatal flaw in my opinion. All right, so let's move on to Team No. This team has been consistently dynamite every time. Yeah. And this is the first time that we've seen them really take a dive in terms of quality. Both of these teams seem to be just a hair's breadth away from each other. The storyline was lacking. The bigger picture didn't quite come through this time. Yeah. I'm getting, of course, a little anxious. I definitely do want to get into the finale to show a little bit more of my building skills, of course. I just hope that uh, we get into the next round. All right, teams, welcome back. It's decision time. What we're gonna do first is tell you who the winner of the challenge is, and that means the other two teams, one of them will be going home. Oh, I'm terrified now that the, the stakes are so high. The team that's gonna win the Supernatural Elimination Challenge is Team Lama! I felt so good. I felt validated. I felt redeemed. We just won the elimination challenge and we're going to the finale. I, I, wow. We won this challenge because we really came together and used each other's strengths and I think just trusting Mira's story really paid off. We just knew that you guys had it in you and the fact that you finally could figure out how to collaborate um, in the best way to show off each other's skill set. You know, great job on that. I mean, all cylinders were firing. Everybody stood up individually. Y'all did great. Way to take the feedback from the judges and incorporate it into this challenge. You guys just hit a home run. Thanks. You really did, did some crazy stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Team Llama. You are safe. You may go back to the workspace. Congratulations, Llama. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. So Team Gnome, Team Cowplant, this was really a tough decision for the judges to have to make. You guys both had, you know, really high points. 
I thought the incorporation of mermaids was done really well. Even if there were beats of the story that we kind of missed, that really shined through and we understood the most important aspect. With you guys, you, you made us. You played to our ego. How could you go wrong with that? You guys did good. They both had really strong points and also they both had things that just weren't quite there yet. I mean, these are two powerhouse teams. <laughs> yes! Exactly, you are. <laughs> Lots of like humor, just like great storytelling, originality. But at the end, you know, the decision had to be made, unfortunately. The team that is being eliminated. Is Team No. No. Oh my God! I cannot believe that Team Noam is going home. I, I'm, I'm in complete shock. I would have loved to show more builds, of course, and other challenges, but it is an honor, honestly, to be on this competition and that I could show my builds. Team Noam, you guys were a powerhouse in this competition. Absolutely. Team Copland, it's time for you to head back to the workspace. Your job here is not done. You and Team Llama will be facing off in the final round. You're still in the race for $100,000, baby. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Team Gnome, I'm sorry, it's time to exit this game. I think we're leaving on a high note because we had so much fun in that challenge. Like, friendship is everything at the end of the day, and I'm glad that we can represent the Sims community in this way. I was able to express my creativity. I didn't feel trapped in a corner or like powerless anymore. If we can keep this up, we might be able to do something here. You are the worst. <laughs> Being with Simmer and Plumbella are my friends, so I don't really feel like myself right now. And the last thing I want to do is hold my team back because I couldn't do what I needed to do for them. I don't know how I'm going to do this without them. Oh. Each of you will face off against the opposing team's respected skill player. Stylist versus stylist, builder versus builder, and storyteller versus storyteller. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling quite a bit of pressure. XB Ramirez is an amazing stylist. I have some really tough competition. I have never done anything like this before, and I am panicking. And for you, watching from wherever you are, your Sims Challenge is live now. Simply head into The Sims 4 on the platform of your choice to find new exclusive community challenges for in-game stylists, builders, and storytellers. And by submitting your community creations, you and your creations have a chance to be on a future season of this show. That's right, maybe the next season of Spark could feature you. Head to thesims.com slash challenge now for all the details and check out the new challenge tab in-game. Can't wait to see what you create.